Hi friends, my name is Farendra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about chloroplast. In this video, I am going to explain you about structure of chloroplast and the DNA of chloroplast and what is the DNA which is mainly present in the chloroplast and the functions of chloroplast and what is the main purpose of the chloroplast. I am going to explain you total in this video. So normally, what is the other name of this chloroplast? The other name of this chloroplast is known as plastid. And this chloroplast, uh, let us know the discovery. This description of the chloroplast was discovered by Hugo von Moll in 1837. The dis description of this chloroplast was given. The, uh, what is mean by description? Description is nothing but the introduction of the chloroplast, the structure of the chloroplast, the functions, and what is uh, what is mean by chloroplast first of all. Uh, all of the description was given by this person, Hugo von Moll in 1837. And the term chloroplast, the name of this chloroplast was given by Edward Strasburger in 1884. Okay? And what is the main function of this chloroplast? Photosynthesis. So, from childhood we are learning what is maybe photosynthesis, right? Photosynthesis is nothing but the leaves which consists of chloroplast will absorb carbon dioxide from the environment and not along with the carbon dioxide the sunlight will also get absorbed and due to that absorption what happens that light energy will get converted to chemical energy by utilizing and pigment known as chlorophyll if you see here the light energy will get converted to chemical energy here light energy is nothing but sunlight and chemical energy is nothing but which consists of molecules like ATP and NADPH okay and then it may then this chemical energy that is nothing but ATP and NADPH will get stored and that which is mainly stored will be eaten by us either in the form of leafy vegetables okay and after this process there is a release of oxygen molecule also in such a way that the oxygen will be inhaled by humans not only the humans also by other organisms living organisms also and again the living organisms will release carbon dioxide back and that carbon dioxide will again utilized by these plants which consists of chloroplast and again the total life cycle will get repeated this is known as photosynthesis and the process of this photosynthesis brief explanation of this photosynthesis was explained in my previous video and the link of that video will be given in the description box so people who are interested please open that video and watch that video and next what is the main function of this chloroplast fatty acid synthesis and amino acid synthesis so what is mean by fatty acid synthesis so the formation of fatty acid is known as fatty acid synthesis right so how the fatty acid is mainly formed how it is mainly synthesized so acetyl coenzyme due to the acetyl coenzyme the fatty acids are mainly formed by utilizing an enzyme known as fatty acid synthesis and this process of this fatty acid synthesis takes place in cytoplasm okay and the the formation of fatty acids from acetyl coenzyme by utilizing an enzyme known as fatty acid synthesis is known as fatty acid synthesis and the process of this fatty acid synthesis takes place in cytoplasm coming to the amino acid synthesis and these amino acids are mainly formed by glycolysis pathway and C3 cycle that is nothing but Kelvin cycle and this glycolysis and C3 cycle I have explained to you before and the link of that video will be given in the description box so please watch that videos and coming to the next one it is a unicellular algae where 1 to 100 chloroplasts are mainly present within a leaf okay within just a leaf 1 to 100 chloroplasts are present for example if you take rice one, uh, 75 chloroplasts are mainly present according to research recent research okay and coming to the chloroplast DNA so what is the DNA which is mainly present in the chloroplast CTDNA which is also known as CPDNA so it is shortly abbreviated as CTDNA so what is the full form of CTDNA circulating tumor I have written here circulating tumor which is shortly abbreviated as CTDNA and this CTDNA is also known as CPDNA what is mean by CP? CP is nothing but chloroplast DNA and this DNA is also known as plastome why it is named as plastome? because what is the other name of chloroplast? plastid and hence it is hence the genome which is mainly present in the plastid is known as plastome for example if you take human beings so normally we will call that genetic material as genome right? so the genetic material which is mainly present in the plants is said to be as plastome right? and next this DNA consists of 1,20,000 to 1,70,000 base pairs. So what are these base pairs? What is mean by base pairs? Base pairs are nothing but uh, nucleotides 
uh, uh, that's nothing but nitrogenous bases. For example, if you take adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil, all of these are known as base pairs. So in that way, there are total one lakh twenty thousand to one lakh seventy thousand base pairs. And coming to the length of the DNA is thirty to sixty micrometers, and the mass mass is nothing but weight. The mass of chloroplast DNA or CP, CFT DNA is eighty to one thirty million Daltons, and this chloroplast DNA is circular in shape. Circular in shape. Most of the chloroplasts are circular in shape, and rare chloroplasts consists of linear DNA, linear shape DNA. And this replication, what is the replication type of this chloroplast DNA? Is D-loop replication. What is this D-loop replication? I explained you the D-loop replication in my previous video, uh, uh, properly. So please watch that video. You will get to understand the concept of this D-loop replication. So now. Let us see the structure of the chloroplast. So now let us learn about the structure of chloroplast. So this is the structure of chloroplast, and if you see here, it is lens oval shaped. It is lens oval shaped, and the diameter of the chloroplast will be three to ten micrometers, and the thickness will be one to three micrometers. And normally, this chloroplast consists of two membranes: outer membrane and inner membrane, and Inner membrane consists of electron transport system, where it is uh, shortly abbreviated as ETS, and it is also known as electron transport chain, and it is shortly abbreviated as ETC. And what is this ETS, electron transport system? What is mean by this? Normally, this electron transport system mainly helps in the transfer of electrons. Uh, no, this transfer of electron takes place by uh, four proteins. Normally, it consists of four proteins. Electron transport system. Uh, complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex four. And if and there is much things to say about this electron transport system. If we if I expose the things, then the topic will get diverted. So I will explain you in my next video. So next, it consists of stroma. If you see here, here the stroma, the empty space which is mainly present within this chloroplast, within the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, is known as stroma. Okay. And the stroma is semi-gel-like fluid. And it also and this also consists of ribosomes. If you see here, this is known as ribosomes. And what is the main function of this ribosome? Normally, ribosome consists of RNA. It consists of RNA. And we know that ribosomes uh, normally RNA of three types: mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. That is nothing but mRNA is nothing but messenger RNA, tRNA is nothing but transfer RNA, rRNA is nothing but ribosomal RNA. So here, this ri our ribosomes are mainly responsible for. Uh, to to combine both mRNA and tRNA to bind mRNA with tRNA. So what is the main function of the ribosome? It mainly binds mRNA to tRNA, and it mainly forms polypeptides and proteins. Polypeptides and proteins, right? And this also consists of starch granules. If you see here, these are known as starch granules. This both red color one which I have drawn are known as starch granules. So, what is the main function of the starch granules? Storage of starch. Storage of starch, okay? And it also consists of lipid droplets. So, if you see, where are the lipid droplets? Here, the black color dots which I have drawn within this chloroplast are known as lipid droplets. So, what is the main function of these lipid droplets? Normally, these lipid droplets are very rich in lipids. So, normally, what is mean by lipids? Lipids means nothing but it consists of uh, carbohydrates. So, normally, these lipid droplets, uh, the main function of these lipid droplets is it acts as storage for carbohydrates it acts as reservoir for carbohydrates simply to say okay so normally this is the structure of chloroplast and if you see here this is the structure of chloroplast and it also consists of thylakoid membranes stroma lamellae and if you see here what is mean by stroma lamellae here what is mean by stroma lamellae normally this uh, these boxes which i have drawn are known as thylakoids and these thylakoids each of the thylakoid will be attached by stroma lamellae so what is the function of stroma lamellae Stroma lamella mainly attaches each thylakoid membrane. Okay, so these are known as thylakoids, and this is the zoom structure of thylakoid. And normally, this is the structure of thylakoid membrane. And this thylakoid normally I have drawn blue and red color structures over there, right? Upon the thylakoid membrane, I have drawn blue and red color structures. And that blue color structure in that in that pigments normally this blue color structure are known as pigments, and the red color structures are known as ATP synthase. ATP synthesis. Did you understand? Normally, this is the structure of thylakoid membrane, and upon the thylakoid membrane, or as within the thylakoid membrane, there is a presence of blue color and red color structures which I have drawn over there, right? And normal in that, in that normally blue color indicates pigments, and red color indicates ATP synthesis. And there is different structure for this ATP synthesis. 
and that different structure of the ATP synthesis will be explained in my next video and that ATP synthesis structure is very much important which will be asked in your examinations or also in the entrance examinations also and blue color is nothing but pigments so what is a pigment chlorophyll pigment it's nothing but chlorophyll pigment okay and this total structure is known as thylakoid membrane and what is the main function of this thylakoid membrane is that normally it takes water molecule and releases oxygen and during this process it mainly utilizes energy what is the energy ADP and it releases ATP so if you see here what is the full form of ADP adenosine diphosphate and what is the full form of ATP adenosine triphosphate that is nothing but ADP consists of two phosphate groups diphosphate so it consists of two phosphate groups whereas in the case of ATP it consists of three phosphate groups hence it is named as ATP adenosine triphosphate three phosphate so you will, there will be a doubt which will be left over in your mind that normally normally we can see form, uh, formation of ADP from ATP by losing one phosphate group but how ATP is mainly formed from ADP that is nothing but one of the phosphate group will be attached to the ADP will be it can it it takes a one of the phosphate group and that phosphate group which receives by ADP is said to be as inorganic phosphate and that inorganic phosphate is shortly represented as PI PI inorganic phosphate okay and this one of the inorganic phosphate will be attached to ADP so normally how many phosphates will be present in ADP 2 phosphate when this PI will get attached to one of the phosphate group will get attached to ADP then how many will form three phosphate groups so finally it leads to the formation of ATP adenosine triphosphate so this is a brief explanation of chloroplast so if you like this video guys if you if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box and also press the bell icon for latest updates of my videos thank you